God's living spirit be present with you and with me also as we seek to open our hearts to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, I know a lot of you were at the big celebration last night. You weren't able to be there. I'm glad you're here this morning. Uh, it was a, a, a wonderful, fun, heartbreaking time. But I, I know as we went through the various parts of the agenda last night, I could... Uh, I, 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 I can console myself by thinking, uh, well, at least uh, there's tomorrow. This is a, you know, we're observing a closure and so on. I can think, well, at least there's tomorrow, Sunday morning, and I'll have my, my uh, Sunday morning St. Stephen's routine that I've observed, except for some vacations and do sabbaticals over the last 20 years. I get up early. I come over here. We have the 8 o'clock service. You know, and then we do this. Um, I don't have that anymore. There isn't going to be that comforting routine anymore. And believe me, I feel it. Uh, but now I have something else. I have, I'm going to Holy Island. <laughs> you weren't there last night. You know, you may not know that St. Stephen's gave Nancy and I the opportunity to travel to Britain again, as you did before, uh, making it possible for us to attend the uh, and Michael's wedding. And uh, but I, ever since I was there, I had some unfinished business. I, I wanted to go to Holy Island. There's a couple of other sacred work sites in Britain that I very much wanted to see. And I wanted to revisit some of the places that I went there last time. Um, so thank you. Uh, when I get there, you will be prayed for. Another gift that I received last night was this talking stick. Uh, this is another example of Dave Stein's ingenuity and craft. It's carved with all kinds of symbols that are, you know, you can tell why I thought this would be something appropriate to me. Uh, I think, I remember you were talking about these before, Dave. I think you. You can use it in group situations to sort of pass it around. And if somebody has something they're going to say, you know, they can hold the talking stick. And uh, I have an idea I'll be able to put this to good use. Someone else pointed out is if the dialogue and the, and the solemn togetherness doesn't work, you can always whack them. <laughs> Actually, what I'm going to do is pass this around. And just keep it going around. There's enough of you here, so you should be able to pass it around all the way. If it gets up back here, could it end back up on the altar, please, so I can be blessed at the Eucharist? Here, honey. Look at it and see what you think of that. You know, it's a, it's a strange and wondrous thing that I don't understand, but I believe with all my heart. And that is, those who would say who would find their life must lose it. In the past 20 years, you know, we haven't been, you know, we're pretty, pretty ordinary folks around here. We don't go looking for Big chances for heroic acts of faith. Well, they enjoy those. But, <laughs> <laughs> but even so, even with you, uh, oh yes, excuse me. Even even with you, I mean the the real examples of taking up the cross and following Jesus aren't in all those good works that you've done and those groups you've taught and everything. It was the thing. 
things that came and found you and pushed you to the edge. Right? I know I'm right. <laughs>
Well, in the book of Exodus, we hear how Moses meets God in a bush that is blazing but is not consumed. And here we again, we have all these strange kind of odd uh, seeming contradictions, you know, death that is no death, fire that does not consume. And Moses says, I will turn aside and see this great sight. You would too. And when God addresses Moses there in the book of Acts, what does he say? What's the first thing he says? 